he was like, I think that you're so successful in business because of the principles that you learned from bodybuilding. We had a, like a 30 minute discussion about that one topic. And I think it's really, really important. Some of the things that we, that we talked about, or it's just very interesting. And so the nice thing about what I want to talk to you about today is if you're really good at business and you want to get jacked or shredded, everything that I'm about to tell you will apply. And if you're really good at being jacked and shredded and really bad at making money, then everything I'm about to tell you will apply because there's actually so many similarities, but not in the way that you would think, all right? And so as I was thinking about this, right, between bodybuilding and business, one of the key things that matters is consistency, right? A lot of people think that intensity is what wins, so they work really, really hard at business for a short period of time, and then they stop, and they look, and they're like, I haven't made a lot of money, right? Or they work out really, really, really hard for a couple weeks or a couple months, and then they're like, hey, I don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, what gives? And then they stop, right? And so I would always rather have somebody work out with a 70% intensity for 10 years, right? Then somebody work out with 120% intensity for one month, right? And the same degree what happens within business, right? If you just consistently do something for a long period of time, you're gonna be really good at it because the total volume of work performed will, will surpass the, the, the total effort from that guy who's being really intense for a short period of time. Because one of the things that happens, I think, over time is that you develop the skill set of persistency, like it in and of itself is a character trait that you develop through doing it, right? So if you're like, I'm not that good at sticking through things, then the best way to get better at sticking through things is to stick with things because then that, just like a muscle, becomes better for you, all right? So all right, so that's 20. We're going to do side to side push ups now. Guys who are really good at one thing. So they're really good at, you know, entrepreneurs are really good at sales, right? Or they're really good at marketing or they're really good at product or they're really good at whatever, right? And to the same degree, in bodybuilding, um, there are people who have really good chests, or really good backs, or really good legs, and then they have other weaknesses. And so in the world, you've probably heard this before, which is you need to double down on your strengths. And I think that there's a certain degree of truth to that. There's also a, a big lie that's woven in. And so here's the similarity <coughs> between the two of bodybuilding that's dirty. and business. Your weakest link in your business will be the constraint of the business. You don't necessarily have to be the person who fulfills that weak link but the business must be balanced. So just like your physique must be balanced, so too must be the business. And so just like you have body parts, you have departments, right, within a business. So you've got marketing and sales, you've got your biceps and triceps, right? And so you have these similarities that are there, but you can't just be all sales and marketing, right? You have to have a back end. You have to have good culture. You have to have finance. You have to have good accounting. Like these are all things that must happen in order for the business to overall be successful over the long term. And to the same degree in bodybuilding, you can't just have all chest because over a long period of time, A, you'll be unbalanced and you'll probably injure yourself. And you won't look good the whole time because the more you get that imbalance, the more unbalanced your body will look and it looks stupid. It doesn't work, right? So for a long enough time horizon, you can be unbalanced in the beginning. It's natural for some people to have naturally better legs or be naturally better at sales and marketing, be naturally better at products and fulfillment. But over time, you have to develop those weaknesses because otherwise those would be the things that constrain your business and your growth and the overall physique or business that you build. So I thought that was a really interesting parallel between the two. Another one's really good. Hold on. Skill comes from volume, right? And it's high quality volume. So this is one that's really interesting. So um, I've, had, I've worked out with friends of mine who are entrepreneurs and I can't tell you how many times they've worked out with me and I'm like, hey man, Shoulder this, tap. This, move your elbows this way, you know, re reposition your body. And it, for some reason it's happened almost every time with back training. And they were like, dude, I've been training for 10 years. And mind you, these aren't like fitness people. They're like business people who are just like, hey, I'll go work out. Yeah, that's fine. Like, dude, I've never felt my back before. Like, I, like today, with you, I've realized that I've never felt my back when I trained. And so think about this for a second. For 10 years or five years, these guys have been training. They're consistent, right? For 10 years or five years, they've been training and thinking that they were training their back, but they weren't. And so the question is, how many people are in business and thinking they're marketing, thinking they're selling, when in fact, they are not? And so what's interesting about this is, and Naval Rothkopf said this, that specified or specific knowledge, right? Is a specific knowledge is, is knowledge that can be learned but cannot be taught. And so the way that people learn it is through application and do it. If you can learn it in school, it's not valuable, right? And so the way that it is learned is through apprenticeship and mentorship, right? And that's why I'm such a big proponent of finding people who have done what you want to do and then and learning from them because there's so many nuances and, and wisps and, and just details and how they execute that create the excellence. And so I'm going to go on this tangent for, for a second because I think it's really important. One, uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. Joe Kashi, PhD, one of the top two smartest people I've, I've known my whole life, he looked, he looked at this big research study that they looked in academia, which was that people who have mentors in academia 
accomplish four times more than people with identical character traits, identical degrees and pedigrees, and all that stuff, who did not have a mentor. Think about that. Four times the production because of the level of specific knowledge that gets transferred from one person to another. For me, I think about that, and I'm like, man, so how much specific knowledge, like, what does it take to get specific knowledge? That's people, 60, baby. Like, hey, you sound so convicted. Like, your, your content seems so different than some of the stuff that I see out there. And I was thinking about this for a second. I was having a conversation with um, Brooke Castillo, who runs a $50 million a year life coach business. Uh, she's one of our really close friends. And she's like, I get the same feedback, too. And she's like, I wish I could teach that thing. And so we're having a discussion about it. And I was like, I think what it is, is it's, 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 First principles like derivatives, like most people that you see have not done the thing that they are teaching. What they do is they are they are spouting things that they have heard and just regurgitating them. And so they do not understand why it is that way. They are saying it is that way, but they lack the details, they lack the nuance of having done it and being able to troubleshoot it because they didn't actually build the thing. They observed it being built and then relayed it to their audience. And most people haven't done it. And that is why things sound different, right? So anyways, back to the specific knowledge of the difference between bodybuilding and business, right? And so you have to do the thing well, like training your back well, do the sales well, in order for your skill to improve. And the way to do that is a lot of times by having somebody who is much better than you teach you how to do it, all right? Because unfortunately, the academic system that exists sucks. And so we have to pay or learn in other ways. And I think you can either go to a company and learn those skills, specific knowledge from doing it, or you can do it yourself, right? Like I like the idea of getting uh, earning while you learn, right? Go to a company, get paid to learn, right? I think it's like one of the best things in the entire world. My 18 year old, or now 19, because he's, he's graduated, you know, he's, he's grown up one year. My 19 year old neighbor um, really wanted to learn how to sell. And he was like, how do I learn how to sell? I was like, why don't you just start working on our sales team? And I'll like, go learn how to sell. He was like, okay. And now, you know, a year later, he went through three ranks of salespeople, of sales positions in our company. He's got promoted twice. And now he's a really good salesman. And he couldn't sell for crap, like a year ago, right? And he, he learned the skill by doing it. Right? And now he can teach the skill because he's done it, right? So a lot of people try and do things too fast, right? You gotta feel it, just like your bodybuilding. Like you have to, you have to do it with the specific uh, intention behind it. So so many people go through the motions and they think they're marketing. They think they're marketing, but really what they're doing is they're like, no, no, we, we do the marketing. We do, the, we do that stuff, right? No, no, I do some of that back stuff. I do some of that stuff, right? So these similarities between the two, because people think they're executing, but they're actually not. And then they wonder why they look the same or why their business is the same level as it was when they started. And so let me um, transition to one of the most important points that we hit on. For bodybuilding and business, nothing replaces hunger. Nothing replaces fanaticism. And I think this is really interesting because a lot of people think, this is a really good one, um, because I've dealt with a lot of fitness professionals. They think, that they are very disciplined. They think they're very disciplined, but I'll tell you what, they're not. Because they like fitness, which is why they do fitness, right? And they've done it for a long time because they enjoy doing it. But when it comes to business, they don't enjoy doing it. And so they are not disciplined, because if you were disciplined, you would do it even though you do not enjoy doing it, right? <laughs> so they think that they do this thing of fitness because they are disciplined, but it's because they enjoy it. And other people do not enjoy it. And so they assume because other people do not enjoy it, that because they do it, it means they are disciplined. And that is not the reality. They do it because they like it. The only people who win in the long term, the only people that, in my observation, who have become super fit, right, or super successful in bodybuilding or business, are people who can do it for a long time. And the best way to do it for a long time is to be obsessed with it, is to actually enjoy doing it, right? Because most fitness professionals that I know have been fit for a long time, they spend their free time reading about fitness. They spend their free time reading books on nutrition. They spend their free time trying new exercise selections, like uh, different training you know, philosophies. They try all these different things because they love it and they think about it in all their free time. And so when I think one of the things that, that it takes to be successful in the is awareness of like, if you want to be a, 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 have an exceptional physique, right, the way to do it is to like it. And if you don't like it, then you may want to adjust your expectations because you're not going to beat someone who does like it and also works that long. And so to the same degree in business, if you're like, let's say in fitness and you wanted to get uh, in business, and mind you, this is not a channel for fitness business stuff. If you were in that <laughs> shoe and you wanted to be good at business, but you just don't- That's a hundred. Reading about it, and you don't spend your waking time thinking about it. All right. And you're just reinvesting because all you want to do is just- Dream team. Information on business. I do it for you, I do it for me, I do it for we, the people.